we're getting some concrete poured here today. To start with, we're getting these outside pieces, these aprons done on the outside of the door. They use different concrete inside and outside. At least this company does. So we just did a couple feet apron out here. We did 10 foot on the other side. Tomorrow, we're gonna pour the rest of the inside of the shed. A little bit of a challenge in there because it's not level at all, the existing concrete. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. We decided to go ahead and pour an apron out here. We've got a door coming. We're gonna use another sliding door, similar to the one we've had here now, only it's gonna be taller and it's gonna be powered. You'll have to stay tuned for that. Should be another week or two before we get that installed and we're excited to show you that process. As you know, we've only recently moved to this area, so we didn't know who to call to get our concrete done. We met Joe and his crew while we were working on the church playground. They were pouring the sidewalks there. Hey, before we get too far into this, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. We're trying to reach that 100,000 mark. We feel like we're close enough now to taste it. Let's take a moment to review this pole barn rehab series. When we bought the property, the barn was usable, but it really wasn't very functional for our need. In fact, in the comments section of that first episode, several viewers said we ought to just tear it down and start over. Who knows, maybe they were right. But we didn't have the money to start from scratch, and we thought if we applied the appropriate effort, we could make this building entirely workable for us. Maybe not exactly what we want, but good enough. We asked the concrete crew to do all the grading and forming so that they would get it done exactly like they wanted. Having said that, we did find a way to involve Johnny. He was a big help spreading some of this excess rock, which they used as base inside. We're not positive why this area wasn't poured originally, but we think it may have been planned to be used as horse stalls. Now back to our story. The first big improvement was the lighting. Jason and Chris not only mounted the new lights, they also replaced the old mouse-infested electrical box. He does a great job working this excavator. That wide, smooth bucket is perfect for this application. The next big step was the strong waist sleeves, which fixed or at least worked around the post rod. This was easy and cost effective, and this step made me much more comfortable with this barn's long-term viability. Another viewer, Wes, has found us some free spray foam insulation. So as we get time, we've been installing that, as you've seen. And our overall goal is to have this building insulated where we can keep it warm this winter. I noticed that this machine has quite a long tail swing. This probably helps with the balance when working sideways like he is there. But I'd have to be careful to make sure I didn't hit the house with the rear end. I had dug out a little trench, just enough to open that door the day before so that I could get in and get most of that mulch out. Actually, you've probably seen that episode. Well, you might want to say, oh, oh, there we go, we can take out the trash. Go slow, Jack. Well, I can't pull it through if you want to go slow. Hard on, good, close.
handprints in it. Well, I was worried about where we're going to put our names. I wasn't thinking about my handprint. Okay. My hand's not going to be changing size anymore. That's true. You know, handprints usually when you're a little guy, you want to see how much you've grown. You want to put our full names in there? Or just initials? Or nothing? Or the year? We definitely want the date. Yeah. After all that talking about it, we both forgot to put the date in the concrete. The crew got here before 7 a.m. the next morning. The biggest challenge they had to deal with was how unlevel the previous floor was, as well as how unlevel the grade board was. It's hard to even call it a grade board. It was a couple of inches off on the sliding door side. That looks like work to me right there. The concrete truck did his clean out in the driveway here both times. I wanted to make sure to get that stuff broken up into small pieces before it set up and this worked really well. I didn't have any big hunks to work with later. Just a day or so ago I saw another post on Facebook of a broken curl cylinder on a loader. Just a reminder, don't tip that bucket edge over center and push forward. What I'm doing here is about as extreme as you need to be. This apron's providing a couple of benefits. First, it allows me to work outside in the shade of the building 
where it's just a little cooler than it is inside. Second, it allows us to get to the walk-in door without walking through the mud. We're pretty happy we added this. It's amazing how much more space it seems like we have with this added concrete. You're right, Christy. It's been a lot of fun and kind of rewarding to see this pole barn come together. Next up in this series, we'll be working on that new sliding door. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.